Hey there, Donna Green Goodman. Waiting for a few of all you you all to join me. I got a message um yesterday from my college friend, Beverly Robinson, and she was um asking me some questions about helping folk cook through the coronavirus time. And I told her that I would do this. So if you're not watching something else and you really want to learn um, a couple of points that might help you, um, we're live now. And I'd love for you to join us. Um, yeah, we're going to talk about some things that you can do, how you can stretch your money, how you can make some things that are tasty. And one of my um, friends, Carol Hairston, actually asked if I would be willing to talk about how to make gluten. So I'm going to do that too. All right, I'll give you a couple more minutes to log on and then we'll get started. And of course, if you do my best to answer them. Y'all there? Okay. No questions yet? Okay, so then I'll just talk. And if you want to join me, you can join me. And if you miss it, you can watch the replay on your computer um, for your time. Listen, I'm Donna Green Goodman. Some of you who don't know me don't know about me. A lot of my friends do. I'm Donna Green Goodman. I'm a public health educator, undergrad degree in home economics, nutrition, a master's degree in public health. And I work with my husband, as a public health educator in our clinic, Lifestyle Therapeutics, here in Huntsville, Alabama. We literally have been in that business for the last five years, but the reason that I'm doing this tonight is because my family has a history of cooking and cooking plant foods, and some of the things that um, I have done over the years, they enjoy. When I was in college at Oakwood, Back in the 80s, my parents had a restaurant called Chubbs, which was a vegetarian restaurant. And a lot of um, people ate there when we were in college. And literally, that's all they talk about when they see me. And so um, that's one of the reasons that I'm here tonight. Problems that actually asked me to do this. Part of the reason I like to do this also is because I was raised as a vegetarian. But when I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1996, I decided that I was going to um, go totally plant-based. And there's some other videos on our YouTube page that may be of interest to you that will explain some of that stuff. The other thing that I have done after the diagnosis was I went back to teaching people how to make healthier choices dietarily and have written three books. First book, Something to Shout About, um, um, that was written, I think, in 1999. And the second book, Cooking Up Good Health, which is a partner to the cooking show, Cooking Up Good Health. And there are videos of that on our YouTube page. And then a couple years ago, I took Cooking Up Good Health and I updated it into an ebook format. And that is on our website, lifestyletherapeutics.com. So that's the background that I bring. Donna Green Goodman, Master's Public Health, and um, taught at Morris College in Sumter, South Carolina, and at Oakwood University. And at Oakwood University, I taught the plant-based cooking class. And so that was literally one of the biggest joys of my life, getting to um, convince people about how they could make different choices in their diet and lifestyle. So if you are trying to get it together for this, um, 
coronavirus thing that we're experiencing right now and you're not a really big cook and you're not sure what to do. Between yesterday and today, I made a run through Kroger here in Huntsville and Walmart and Publix and today I went in Target and I think I went in Aldi's the other day. And we usually buy for, for um, times like this is gone. The milk, the bread, there's the meat that's gone, the, the comfort foods, that sort of stuff. And it was interesting to me that I kept seeing online that there were so many of the healthier options that were still that folk weren't buying. And so I don't know what it's like where you live, but when I went in the store today, they were still stocking fresh produce. Um, they had replenished some of the bread, not all of the bread. The frozen food seemed to be okay. Um, and there was, there was still plenty of canned vegetables. So if you're trying to make healthier choices over this time that we are all quarantined, it would probably be a good idea to look at the, the good, healthy staple foods. So when you go in the grocery store, you want to stay in the produce section. When you're walking down the aisle, literally the way that they set this up is that the healthier items are usually on the top shelf or on the very bottom shelf. And the stuff they want you to buy is at eye level, as where you're walking or if you have a child in the cart and um, are looking, the child's looking and wants to put in the buggy, whatever is at, excuse me, eye level. So you wanna look at the top and the bottom. You wanna look for things that don't have a lot of additives or preservatives in them. You wanna look for things that are easy to do. And if you're not a cook, that might seem like a, a hard thing to do, but it's really not because what I like to try to tell people is to find things that they actually like and, and, and kind of go in that direction. And so what I would suggest that you do, if you get a chance to go back out tomorrow, or if you have some of this stuff in your head, in your home, look in your cabinet, in your pantry to see what kind of, of products do I already have that are there that are good for us and that are healthy for us because we're probably now pretty much into about a week of doing this and we probably don't need to um, be so concerned about comforting ourselves anymore. That time is over, all right? Y'all can get rid of the junk food. What you need to do now is eat some healthy food so that you don't roll out of this at the end of the, the quarantine time. And the way that you can do that is to choose whole foods, whole brown rice, whole grits, um, whole grain flours, whole grain pastas. If you are allergic to gluten, you can get some gluten-free stuff. And I have some things back here that you can probably see that I like to recommend to people. Of course, if you do beans, whether you use the canned ones or if you're going to use dry ones, um, and then if you're going to do pasta, you can buy a national brand. There's one that I the very first time, and I just really enjoy how this one um, acts and, and cooks up. Or you can buy a store brand, and then this is one of the gluten-free brands that I buy. My girlfriend, Glenda Jones, is an expert on literally how to um, do things that are gluten-free. And so if you have some of these basics, if you have stuff like rice, people who are trying to cook brown rice nowadays, it's a little challenging for them, but if you use instant brown rice, then you're guaranteed that it's gonna come out really well. And some of the things that you could do with this instant brown rice is to cook it up um, in a big batch and then you could use it for fried rice. You could make some kind of rice dishes for breakfast or you could divide it up and you could make red rice out of it, like Spanish rice with tomatoes and tomato sauce. You could make yellow rice out of it with um, turmeric and onions and garlic powder. Um, you could do Caribbean rice and peas with it. Um, just a rice and mixed vegetables with it. And these are some things, recipes for this sort of stuff that are in the book, Cooking Up Good Health, or Still Cooking Up Good Health, that's available on our website. Um, in addition to that, one of the things that we have been trying lately is, is brown, black rice. And this is absolutely amazing because it is a whole grain. It's a little more challenging for you to um, get it cooked well, but it's going to take longer and you have to add more water. So if you're in the habit of doing traditional white rice and you do one cup of rice to two cups of water, for a whole grain rice like this that's old-fashioned, I would probably do a cup of rice to three cups of water and it's going to take a little longer to cook. And so um, this is another option. And when we did this with our patients in the clinic, 
we made Buddha bowls out of it and put the rice in the bottom and then they could put vegetables and stuff on top that they wanted. And then we took some veggie chicken and mixed that up and made um, a ginger, some kind of ginger sauce to go on top of it. And that's something that you can do. And if you've got able-bodied children at home, you can bring them in the kitchen with you. Oh, and, and if you're not really comfortable with that, you literally can have the food prepared and then put it out. You ain't got washing dishes and all that during this time. And then, of course, if you are involved with somebody else in the kitchen. So that's some of the stuff that you can do. One of the things that um, I'm going to put up here, literally, that But I'm going to add that to the feed when I'm done with this because it's in another document. When you, um, in our clinic a few weeks ago, we did everything garbanzo beans. So if you have a can of chickpeas in the house and you need something to do with it, or if you want to go out and buy some, this is something that you could also do. We took these chickpeas and you can make a whip topping off of the, the juice that's in here, like um, a meringue. You can also use the juice in place of egg and make um, pancakes with it. So we serve pancakes with um, strawberries and whipped cream to our patients. You could then take beans out of this can and make a hummus. And we made a basic hummus and we took um, bell pepper and roasted it in the oven. And the roasted bell pepper was added to it and that was a hit as well. You could make curry in a hurry. My cousin Camille and I had some company and, um, literally we didn't have enough food and so we did what i call curry in a hurry and that's going to be on what i post as well and we did onions and bell peppers and and potato and the the beans and some veggie chicken and the curry powder and coconut milk and it was a hit and when we did it for the cooking class everybody thoroughly enjoyed it and let me see if there's another recipe here that we did because I don't want to forget anything. We did the garbanzo bean juice pancakes, the whipped topping, the curry in a hurry, and we made tuna salad. My son actually talked to me about this tuna salad and the lady who volunteers at our office, Garney, she decided one day that she was gonna make it and it was a big hit. You drain the juice off, you mash the beans up, and you would put in this salad anything that you would normally put in like a chicken salad or a fish salad, celery, bell pepper, onion, whatever else you like, and some mayonnaise. And we like to use the Hellman's mayonnaise. It's back um, on the shelf as well. And then you could do that and use that as a spread. And we made hummus out of it. And so one can of beans, usually I buy the beans from Kroger or Walmart, the um, um, organic ones, but these were a gift to us. And so we've been cooking up everything chickpea. And this is five things that you can do from a can of beans um, that you could probably use over the next however many days you're going to be on lockdown. The other thing that we do is my husband and I love to make homemade applesauce. And we literally take our favorite apples. He likes Gala and um, Red Delicious. And I like Ambrosia. And we literally take about eight or 10 apples, cut them up, put them in a pot with a can of apple juice and a cinnamon stick. And if you don't have cinnamon or like something else, put that in there. Um, can of frozen apple juice concentrate and you literally let it um, boil until the apples are done. And then you put this in your blender or your Vitamix and you blend it to the desired smoothness. Some of our patients like it chunky. Some of our patients like it really smooth. And um, every time we've made it, our patients have loved it. And they talk about, let's go make some biscuits so that we can eat that. If you make the applesauce, part of the reason that I recommend it is because some scientific studies have shown that for cancer, when they put it in the Petri dish with prostate and breast cancer cells, it killed the cells upon contact. And if you decide to make it and you are concerned about which apples to use, whatever ones you like, or, or what you can use and the darker ones that you use the, the red delicious just by the color of the skin it's going to make a darker final product and if you use lighter apples with a lighter skin that's going to make a lighter apple product now what you could also do if you like the apples and pears and strawberries you can put all that in there and blend it up and um, make it taste really good 
Okay, let's see what else here that I've got to say while I'm talking to you. Um, I don't see any questions yet. So I'll keep going. All right, what else do we do here? Um, a lot of folks are cutting back on sugar. We usually buy, I used to buy this brand, but I don't buy it anymore because it's too expensive. I buy a less expensive brand and I fill these containers with the sugar in it. But if you're home now and can't get back out to the store or your store has run out of it and you're baking with your children or you decide that you're going to make some for that loved one in your life, what we have been doing is taking a cup of this sugar and a table and voila, you get brown sugar that easy you can also take a cup of this sugar and put it in the blender and put in a tablespoon of cornstarch and blend that up and it will be um as long as you the longer you blend it the finer it becomes and you have confectioner's sugar and you won't have to go out for anything and of course this would be amazing if you've got grandchildren in the house or even college students or a babysitter or something this would be something that would be really good to do so that you they could see the change in what they needed the more molasses you put in it the darker it will become so if you want light brown sugar you put a tablespoon of molasses if you want a darker brown sugar you put in some more molasses okay um, I think that's it for what I'm saying now. Let's see. Now, Carol Hairston asked me about making gluten. And if you are not a person who has a problem eating gluten, what they call it now is seitan. And seitan is another name for gluten. And years ago, when I was a child, my mother taught me how to make old-fashioned gluten. And we would take a five-pound bag of flour. Sometimes it would be 100% whole wheat. And then sometimes I would mix the whole wheat with an unbleached, and sometimes I would just do unbleached. And I'm washing out all the starch and everything. You pour water in it until it forms a ball and then you knead this ball and then you wash let it soak and then you wash out all the starch and you're left with the protein which is gluten people who are gluten sensitive don't think gluten is healthy this ain't for you but if you don't have a problem with it then definitely you can make this gluten the process that i just described takes a pretty long time to do so what i have started doing is using instant gluten flour and you can find that in your health food stores in bulk. Um, Bob's Red Mill makes a brand, and I think it's another company, Hodgson Mills makes a brand that you can use. And let it work. And if you can see that, I've added about a cup of the gluten flour to this cup here. And over here on the stove, what I have is some onions and bell peppers that are simmering, and this is gonna be the broth that we put them in. So. For Carol, I want her to know that a couple weeks ago, my niece was visiting and we literally were in here playing around and we made this amazing gluten steaks and then we browned them and made a mushroom gravy over it. And that was really, really good. And so that's what I'm doing um, for you all to see now. Into this flour, gluten flour, I'm going to sprinkle some granulated onion and it's probably like maybe a half a teaspoon or so and some granulated garlic. And I'm going to put a little nutritional yeast in here. And I'm going to put a little salt in here. Whatever kind of salt you use, it doesn't have to be a lot. And I'm going to stir that up with a fork. So it's good and mixed. And then I have about a cup of warm water. And into this warm water, I'm going to add a little kitchen bouquet. I have found that kitchen bouquet and Bragg's liquid amino give things a meaty flavor. And so what my niece and I did was to add a little of that to this water to give our gluten a brown color and of course to add some flavor. Now usually you can put an equal amount of water to the And what I'm gonna do is add almost all the water here 
And then I'm going to stir this up quickly. And you see how it comes together? And it literally has started to brown everything up. And so you can flavor this however you want it. If you are Caribbean and you like curry, if you are Hispanic, and there's some flavors that you enjoy in your culture, you could do that. So once I mix it together, there's literally this blob of gluten that is now available. And we grew up, a lot of us eating these gluten steaks and our mamas would make some of the most amazing stuff that you could eat over rice and potatoes and sometimes just on a sandwich. And I keep playing with it, just kind of kneading it in my hands a little bit until it gets to a texture that I actually like. And this is probably about right. And I'm just going to let this rest for a few minutes while we work on the broth. So while that's resting, I'm going to go over here. And what I have in here are onions and bell peppers that have just been sauteing and some celery. And now what I'm going to do is turn this around so you can see what I'm doing. I'm going to add some McKay's chicken style seasoning. And this is a non-chicken broth that you can get. And I have some other ones that I left in the car, Donna. That doesn't make a lot of sense. So we're going to have to show you that later. Then I'm going to add some more garlic powder. Powder. And I'm going to put some more of the breads and a little more of the kitchen bill pack. And that's going to flavor this. And then what I'm going to do is add water to get a broth going. And this is probably about four to six cups of water because this is where you're going to season your gluten. Let you see what that looks like. See that there? Okay. And we're going to put this back on the stove and bring that to a broil. If you have other favorite seasonings that you like, this would be the time to add that so that you can get the flavor that you want. And when I talked to my niece when we were doing it before, I told her that she really needed to make sure that she um, put... It's the, the broth should be strong because the flavor has to be absorbed into the gluten. And if it's not strong enough, that's not what's going to happen. It won't taste so good. All right, let's see if we can make this. Here now we have this piece of gluten. And what I think I'm going to do is just stretch it out long like this. And then I'm going to. Let me stick while I'm doing it so you could just see it. And I'll upload those to the video. And I'm just going to cut this. I'll probably get pieces out of this cup. And once it's boiled, then you could use it in a variety of ways. You could brown it and cook it up. You could put it in soup. You could put stews. Um, you could um, um, shred it up and put it in meatloaf if that's something that you wanted to do. It depends on how your family eats it up quickly. My husband and my niece and I were the only ones here that weekend and we killed it. It didn't last long at all. Okay, and that broth is getting boiling over there. And as it boils, we will drop these pieces of gluten in there. And we'll have some homemade gluten. Now, this is what the piece looks like. And I'm just going to flatten them out. And we're going to drop them inside of the broth when the broth starts boiling. I think that's my husband coming in the door. Hi, husband. Hey there. Okay, I don't know if anybody's watching or not, but I don't see any questions. So if you have some, just type them up there and I'll be happy to answer them. That water should be boiling in a few minutes. 
What you making, babe? I'm making some um, homemade gluten chops. Hey, hey. And we've already talked about things that they could buy and use during the um, coronavirus and us being sequestered in our houses. I'll be the taste tester. <laughs> yeah, did you want to run outside to my coffee? I put some containers of um, non-chicken broth. I think they're on the count on the driver's passenger side. Okay, so y'all can see this, what it looks like. Those are the pieces, and we're getting ready now to take them and drop them in the broth when this broth starts to boil. Let me see if it's strong enough. Actually, it could be a little stronger than that, so I'm going to add some more seasoning to it. A little more of the gluten, I'm sorry, the breads, and I'll probably add some more onion and garlic. And I think I may put a little sage in here too. One of the things that I really like to do when I lived in Atlanta was shop right at the DeKalb Farmer's Market. And so my counters are full of these containers, ice in them, and sage and thyme are two of my favorites. And if you want this to have a meaty flavor, of course, you can add that sort of stuff to it. Let's see. The amazing thing about these products is you can get little containers like, like this. This is savory, and you can buy um, sage and thyme and all that, and you're only paying like a dollar for each of them compared to what you would pay in the traditional grocery store. So this is one of my new favorites, savory, and I'm going to add some savory to this. Just a pinch. And I can hear it almost boiling, and as soon as it boils, we're going to put the veggie meat in there. Now, what I have learned is when you're making this veggie meat and you bring the water to a boil, if you let it boil high for the whole time, you're going to have these big blubbery pieces of meat. So what my niece and I did was we dropped them in the water and then we let them boil for a couple minutes, but then we turned it back down and let them simmer. So the density of it was, was much better than if we had let it boil the other way. Two other things that I recommend for people who are looking for a chicken flavor but don't want the chicken is the Not Chicken Cube, which is um, available in health food stores. It's by Edwards and Sons. And then the Vegetarian Chicken No Broth, which is a really good one. And if you can get your hands on... This is an excellent one. They have a, a, an herb flavor, seasoned vegetable base, and they have a no chicken one that is absolutely delicious. Okay, the water is boiling. Can you see that there? And what we're literally going to do now is drop these pieces of gluten in the water. And as we drop them in the water, they're going to start to swell and get big and nice and perfect for us to make some gluten steaks out of. Carol Hairston, I hope that you are watching this because I did this for you, girl. Easy peasy. Okay. And I've got a few more pieces here. And I want you to see that they're just in the center of my hand and we're going to flatten them out and add that to the water and I probably have about 20 pieces here that I got from this little one cup of gluten. My girlfriend in Atlanta, Deborah Meredith, actually is the one who gave me the confidence to do this because I was used to doing it the old way and it takes a lot more work than this but once you play with it you can, you're able to find something the amount of water to, to um, flour that you use and it turns out wrong. Well. Okay, we're going to let that boil for a few minutes. What else can you do? Eat in season while we're on this break. Don't be trying to buy um, food like 
strawberries and mangoes quite yet and expect them to be a really good price because we're entering the season but it's not season yet and if you look at the price of apples they literally the price is going up because we're heading out of the season so we're kind of in between some of those things back here i have a bunch of collard greens for the probably last three or four months at kroger here in huntsville they've been on sale for 99 cents for a pretty big bunch and you can either Cut these up raw and make a collard green salad. You can cook them the traditional way in the pot and make collard greens out of them. You can also take them and put them in your Instant Pot, which has been a real blessing to us lately. Um, and they'll cook in like 20 minutes. And then sometimes if I have leftover collard greens and it's not enough to feed everybody, I'll make a collard green quiche out of it. Sometimes I will take leftover collards or kale that are already cooked and I'll put them in a pot with soup, a can of, um, um, black eyed peas and some sweet potatoes cut up onions bell pepper you could do turnip greens if you wanted to and that way you can make a, a big soup and if you like dumplings you can make cornbread dumplings or if you're Caribbean you could make the tr traditional ca Caribbean dumpling and put in there and that would be something that's really good too now some of you have seen my um, Auntie Donna's fried chicken on YouTube and one day we finished making the chicken and there was still broth in the pot. And I took a head of, of cauliflower and I cored it. And then I put the cauliflower down inside the leftover liquid and just let that liquid steam. And I swear to God, I thought my husband was going to eat the whole pot. It was so amazing and delicious. And so if when you are at home, if you decide to plan some meals, I, I suggest to people that one day they do a potato dish, one day a pasta dish, one day a rice dish, and maybe one day like a soup dish or a one dish casserole. And then the final day you're eating leftovers. But if on the first day, like today at the office, we had a veggie meatloaf and a baked potato and some glazed carrots. And so there was meatloaf left over. How can I incorporate that into the next day? Well, the next day I might serve the meatloaf and make a rice and gravy and collard greens and sweet potatoes to go with it. And then on the next day, I may have um, some collard greens left over. So I've already had potatoes. Then the second day I've had rice. And now I might make like a, a pasta. Traditionally, we might do a spinach pasta, but you could do a collard green pasta with red bell peppers. You could throw some beans in there, onions, that sort of thing. Flavor it up the way you want. And then when you get to the fourth day of the week, if you have some leftover rice, you could make a soup. And, and build your ingredients around that. Tomatoes, some veggie chicken, onions, bell peppers, maybe some corn, and season that up with some herbs and some bay leaves, and you've made it through the end of the week, and then the next day everybody's on their own. You don't have to be cooking anything. And then it's on to the next week. Okay. These little boogers are swelling up some. So we're gonna let them boil some more. I'm not certain if I've answered any questions, but I tell you what, it's been 30 minutes already and I'm not seeing anybody ask anything, so perhaps we missed it. But I want you to know that um, thanks to my friend Beverly, we've had this time together and perhaps I'll come back and do something else over the next few days. If you are interested in seeing some other things that I have made, go to our YouTube channel, Lifestyle Therapeutics, spelled T-H-E-R-A-P-E-U-T-I-X on YouTube. Go to our website where you can order the books um, the um, ebook is probably the quickest one that you can get. And in the ebook, I actually have links to the YouTube videos for some of the recipes that are in the book. And I also have a list of um, amazing plant based professionals, many of whom I went to college with, who are now health educators and physicians and a whole bunch of other things, dietitians. For you. And then in the back of that one, there are um, some re restaurants that you can go to. There are menus, a month's worth of menus that are included. And that is on our website, lifestyletherapeutics.com. Go to the for any page and section. And at the top of the blue section, you can click on shop for better health. And that'll take you to our online store where you can order the books. You can get the ebook either in a PDF format or in um, an Apple format. And then if you want a hard copy of the book, that's something that we can mail to you. I don't know how many days they're going to let us out, but that is something that's available. Twitter at Still Shouting, where I often post other recipes and pictures of things that I'm doing.
Don't know when you join me, but I'm Donna Green Goodman, MPH, health educator trained in plant-based living. I am a 24-year breast cancer survivor, have spent part of my career teaching other people how to cook amazing plant-based foods. And my husband and I operate Lifestyle Therapeutics, a physical therapy wellness clinic here in Huntsville, Alabama. Huh? And if you can't find me there, I'm probably in my kitchen cooking up good help. Okay, I want y'all to see what this is looking like now. So I'm going to bring this back over here. And you can see how the pieces have started boiling up. And they swelled some. And so we're going to now turn this down and just let them simmer until they're done. And then maybe in the morning I'll make my husband some biscuits and some grits and some meat and gravy. I think that would be amazing. Have a wonderful rest of the evening, Beverly and Carol. I hope this was helpful. We'll talk to you later. Bye.